on this computer. And guys, we are um, uh, gonna go live with a little town hall meeting. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, some of the things happening across the country. And uh, we've got all kinds of great people in the house uh, that came in over from uh, the Facebook group. group. So we've got Rick Chafee, um, Scotty Payne, and Chris Church are gonna get started here. Rick, what do you got going? First of all, I'm gonna correct you. We got Mike Church here from Cody Pools and we got Scotty Payne from Scotty Payne Custom Pools. So. This is uh, Rick Chafee with Ask the Masters. We're doing a live podcast, ideally. If it's not, we've got it at least on Zoom for everybody. We're trying to get the most timely information out in front of everybody that we can. Obviously, the uh, current economic climate is making things change every minute because of COVID. Um, we are doing our best to stay on top of those pieces and parts, and we're also trying to bring in exclusive partners that we work with and other masters of other trade to tell you what we're doing business-wise and making these uh, adaptations to what's going on in the market. Today, we're going to talk about, for sure, we're going to talk about the PPP program. Uh, we will talk about um, what, me, what the rest of the business owners that we're talking to have been doing most recently, and also start to discuss some of the things we're doing as businesses like Mike Church has done to work with other pool builders in this area to keep pressures on, on the politicians and the building departments to kind of keep things moving. So without further ado, we're going to get moving. Good morning, Scotty Payne. Give us a quick introduction. Tell us who you are, where you do most of your work, and kind of roughly what the size of your co company is for everybody to understand. Thank you so much. Uh, Scott Payne, President of Scott Payne Custom Pools, Scott Payne Outdoors. We service the Eastern PA market, um, New Jersey, tip to tip, and we also do business in Delaware. On average year, we'll do about 40 pool projects and about another 20 to 25 renovations and outdoor projects. You've been able to still stay, keep, work, keep working in your market currently, correct? We have. We have. We're, we're, uh, we're very lucky the state of New Jersey does not have a full construction ban so we've been, uh, we've been blessed with the fact that we can keep going in Jersey. We have a couple projects going on now. PA is the exact opposite. We have 100% construction shutdown in PA. There's, uh, we're deemed as a non-essential here. Uh, we can service, so our service division is going to start opening pools this coming week. But as far as construction, we're 100% shut down. Awesome. Mikey Church, I think you're still out on your ranch, but your companies are running as full steam as you can, correct? Give us a little bit of it, more insight on you, introduction to your company, and kind of give us an idea of what you guys are doing right now. Yep, sure. Uh, Mike Church, president and CEO of Cody Pools. Um, we're located in, our home base is in Austin, Texas. Uh, we build in Austin, San Antonio, Houston. We also have an office in Tampa, Florida. Build about 1,000 pools a year. Um, we were shut down in Austin temporarily for about a week with uh, no construction allowed, but we got that lifted this week with a uh, new order from our Governor Abbott. So we're back working in all markets right now. Awesome. One of the things I think is important, we've had a number of people we've been talking to, pool builders and everybody else, this, this uh, pavement protection program, there's, I think there's two sides to this idea. A lot of people are like, I don't need it. I don't want to ask for it. I don't want to find out there's some crazy rule change in the end. Um, I don't want to, you know, get hung over it, but I, I think everybody needs to understand, obviously Mike and Scotty, both of you found in different markets, you might stop, you might be fighting to stay open, right? So although we are, a lot of us are considered essential today, the, the point of the PPP program, and it says it in the program is for not, for the, for not knowing what's going to happen in the future because of COVID. It is pre-planning, right? The only way anybody is going to get through this is to pre-plan and get ready for it, not try to figure out what to do when the crap, when the world comes coming down. So the PPP program's open up until September, I think, to apply for, but it is set up as first come, first serve. There is $249 billion available, but just for rough numbers, we know that as of this morning, Bank of America has 60,000 applications already in their system for $6 billion, right? Uh -huh. So that is gonna go very quickly. Um, if you are not got your paperwork together, if you don't understand your paperwork, we need you guys to, I think the first thing you need to do and the most important thing to do is that. I want to, we'll get into some of the specifics of that towards the end of our, towards the end of our presentation a little bit here, but I think it just brings up the most important thing. You have to be preparing for this. And part of what we spoke about last week was what should we be doing to prepare? What are companies doing? I know Mike had his accounting department met with them and he started talking with them to figure out how do I make sure I have, I think 13 weeks of, of cash flow analysis. Is that what you guys were doing, Mike? Yeah, that's correct. We just figured at the time we just picked 13 weeks to see how long it could be before we get, um, get through all this. And so we just analyzed them, just looked at our cash, what we would have coming in by the current projects and what the future projects would be that we'd be starting is what we did. Yeah. And, and I think that's the other thing is to hold all your cash, right? 
I don't think it makes any sense today to be doing mass big purchases on equipment, big purchases on machines, um, you know, pr pr property improvements, that kind of stuff. I think the smartest thing you need to do is hold tight with that. Now, to that same perspective, the intention of the PPP program is to keep all your employees working, correct? So what could happen is you could be in Scotty's world and get all of your pool work shut down. The goal is to keep your employees employed. That means you can employ them to do whatever you need them to do. So possibly in two weeks from now, when you're getting your PPP money and you might not be able to do any pool work, now's the time to maybe spend some time and money with your labor on property improvements, where that's working your warehouse, cleaning up your trucks, do whatever, any of those kind of things, you actually can use that money to do those things if you keep your employees employed, I believe. The intention is keep them employed. You can't, you can't start using that money for any other purposes, but if you can keep them employed, it's a great place to put that money. But if you haven't planned ahead, you won't have that money in place, right? So, um, Scotty, what have you guys been doing as a business, or what did you guys start doing early on in this plan to start preparing for what might come, even though we don't know what it is? The key, the key is, uh, I'll use the term scar tissue. Nobody understands fully what the scar tissue of this is going to be in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days. We're in a situation, unlike, unlike you and um, Mike, that you know, we only build, we're, we're seasonal here. You know, we're about a nine-month build cycle. So my biggest fear is we're, we're okay right now. We had a bunch of projects in the pipeline. We, we knock on wood, we have not had any cancellations. It's almost the exact opposite that we've had people calling us saying, hey, you know, what, what's, what's going to shake out from this? When can you start my project? My biggest fear is we all understand a sales funnel and a sales cycle is the stuff that's in there now that we're currently doing Zoom first appointments with, phone calls for introductory because we're not doing any in-home visits. How will that shake out? And, and where does that pipeline of sales come from for May, June, July, and into the fall, which is typically our busy season? Our bank has been absolutely amazing. They've been very proactive in contacting us, telling us what programs updating us right now almost on a twice a day basis because as you said, the rules are changing constantly. Um, and, that's, and that's where we're going is we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get what, whatever we can, whatever we qualify for and, is, and monitor it. You know, if, if sales continue and this comes back like everybody's hopeful it will, then it's, it's money that, you know, it's just found money and, and we can keep everybody on board. But um, that's, that's kind of our strategy at the moment. Well, I think you, you kind of touched on things without even by getting specific about it, but you've obviously made the adaptations too. You could either just say, we're not having any client meetings. We're not like, you have to get figured out. You've got to get on Zoom. You've got to keep taking client meetings. You got to, your sales funnel is huge and you're absolutely right. Either I've got one big job that has put itself on hold, a four and a half million dollar project, it's on hold, doesn't mean it's going away, but obviously that's a massive impact to my future business. We weren't under construction yet, we might never get under construction, right? So now you have to start thinking company sizing or how to keep the sales funnel other projects. We were, with projects in the queue, we were pushing off projects we weren't necessarily going to take on. Um, even sending them to other other local pool builders because we couldn't take the work. And obviously our company has adjusted that that concept a little bit to say, look, we need to be a little more aggressive. We'll figure out, we can always figure out how to get work done. That's the way we always look at it is keep the foot on the gas. But now we're even harder on the gas. We, we, we're just, we're now pushing anything that's a potential project to come in, even one that we would probably have overlooked earlier. We're going to start bringing those back into the fold because we look, no one knows what's about to happen, but we can surely ex expect that the automobile market's going to get hammered hard. They haven't sold cars for at least three or four weeks of any kind of ma magnitude. The home building market is going to get hammered, especially the production side of stuff, because they're not selling and moving houses the same way they were. And those markets could, could get tighter with the value of home values if they start to move around. We've got to start preparing somewhat for the worst case. But I think you have to think through that and know that the, fit, the funnel has to get clean, clean back up. And you need to make sure you're doing everything possible today to keep those opportunities and keep those touches to your clients. Keep touching the clients, make sure you know they're still there. You got clients that jobs aren't ready to start, they're in for permitting. Be reaching out to those clients, let them know, hey, we're still working on your project, permits are still allowed, we know it's in the queue. You know, keep, you gotta keep doing those things. If you don't do those things, those clients are gonna be, keep them, you gotta keep them off the cliff. I think if you keep them knowing that your company's working hard and getting it done, you're gonna be in good shape. I also think it's critical to not stick your head in the sand. I think there's plenty of people that are, kind of looking for some relief. Well, if nobody else is working, I'm going to quit working, right? If everybody else is going to stop, I can stop too. I, 
I'm looking at it exactly opposite. We have a, a weird, this is the first time the construction industry has got to get past something better than the rest of the entire market, right? Anytime we've had major market collapses, who's the first to get hammered? Us. And it's happened every time. When the market gets rough, the housing market goes, we go. The rest of the, you know, you've still got restaurants still open, people still need doctors, but construction gets stopped a lot. So this is the unique opportunity I think we have as a construction industry, swimming pools, home building, construction in general, they're allowing us to be considered essential. Capitalize on every bit of that. Get as much work that you can keep coming in and run your, pro, run your company as far as you can until they tell us to stop because that could happen in the next coming weeks if the COVID virus does not get itself under control. Mike, I, go ahead. Well, I was Mike, gonna, go ahead, Scott, sorry. I'm sorry, what, what I found, you touched on some good points is, this is the first time I can remember, literally in the history of the world, that, that we have a client's attention. We have 100% of their attention. You know, everybody's life has slowed down significantly. When you walk to the mailbox, you're not throwing that stuff on your front seat. You're, you're walking to the mailbox to get your mail. We've, we've upped our direct mail campaign by 400% right now. 400%. Um, those clients, as you said, we, we are touching, you know, we are touching every lead, every contact, every previous appointment. We're reaching out to people that already told us they, they signed with other companies, knowing exactly what you said. Every, companies, their heads in the sand. This is like a vacation. I, th I think this is an amazing opportunity to grow the business. Uh, point, point blank, in the end, we're gonna come out of this, our company's gonna come out bigger, faster, stronger, um, and that is a directive that we have from, from myself down right through our staff, is foot on the gas, as you said, you stole my thunder. Mike, what are you doing? Anything different to keep touching clients or get your sales staff to keep pushing out to those guys and talking to them? No, uh, we've been reaching out and we've been uh, trying to stay in touch. We've been. Fortunately, our leads have been up. Uh, just like I said last week, um, when we finished up March, our leads were up about 20% uh, from the same March as a year ago, which we don't understand. We just, I mean, most of it's internet leads, and uh, we, we pulled back on our TV advertisement for two weeks, just postponed it just to see what the market was gonna do, but it just seems that we still have a plenty of leads coming through the internet. We've, uh, our bookings for March um, was down about 30% from last year's March, but still considering the situation we were happy with the numbers that we've seen but uh, right now the most of our employees uh, designers they're just reaching out to customers just to keep them on the fence nobody's canceling everybody's kind of the ones that don't want to move forward they're just kind of wanting to wait and see is the feedback i'm getting from everybody uh, well i think like like scotty brought up we have their attention better than we've ever had it right they have a lot less going on and that's why you're probably seeing more leads coming through especially through the internet because they, they're, they're kind of sitting at home, they're getting bored at looking at Facebook, they're hopefully, they're not getting too bored at looking at Ask the Masters, but the reality is they have a lot more time on their hands. They're also, you know, social distancing from the rest of their friends, so they're not going out and doing as much, they're not going to the bars, they're stuck at home watching, you know, Netflix and, and, and Facebook and YouTube, so it's, it's a cool. unique opportunity to stay on top of these things and capitalize on I mean, it. You, you know, employ your workforce and your sales force to be chasing these guys down because you, could, you're, you we're going to lose some guys. We have to, we have to know that there's part of these projects are going to get lost. There's going to be multiple projects in the pipeline that are going to disappear or change. But like Scotty said, you're going out, you know, you're going back for people that you might not have closed on that went with another company. There is also going to be companies that won't get through this very likely, right? There's plenty of companies that haven't adapted quickly that aren't going to make the change or are taking the vacation time to say, well, if nobody else is really working and the state kind of says they don't want us doing work, and it's gonna be a hassle to get permits and I can't really go see my clients, some people will take a step back. This is exactly where the entrepreneurs and the opportunistic people get in and say, this is where I'll, I'm gonna stake my claim. I can get a little more work. And I think you need to overload your pipeline. You can always offset some work or find a way to get it done or give it to one of your local other pool builders referring to somebody else if it got that way. But, but you can never make up work that doesn't exist, right? That's, that, there's no way you can overcome that. Well said. Um, one thing, so let's, so let's start to transition a little bit into, let's start talking about the PPP program. So um, in general terms, we've been chasing this pretty hard. We did a little talk about it last week. Um, it came out Friday afternoon. I, as a, as a owner of a company with multiple employees, spent my Friday until about nine o'clock at night doing every piece of research I could find. You know, everybody tells me there's free money. I'm going to try to get some. Um, it, it appears that this is going to be a, a very quick acting program. I, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not big on giving away money, but when it's been given away to everybody else or my competitors, I'm going to make sure I'm getting my piece of the pie. 
So the, the general terms of how this project works or program works, first, let's be clear, guys, we are not accountants. We are dumb pool builders, okay? So take this information, take this advice. This is the information we've put together. We've got it from our bankers. And I've been talking to, one of my clients runs a massive payroll firm. He's been fl fl shooting information to me every day. And I'm looking at his information. It doesn't align with my, my, my bank saying. It doesn't align with what somebody else is saying. So make sure you talk to your financial institution. Make sure you talk to your accountant. Make sure you put the paperwork together correctly. Keep track of what's going on. It keeps changing. Literally, it changed on us. We, we had our applications ready Thursday afternoon because we were working with a bank. They had them in their hands. Friday morning, there was a change to the application. We had to make that change. Friday afternoon, there was a, there was a clarification on something we had questions on. We had to modify our application again. Um, but in general terms, it's a very well thought out process as far as I'm concerned, what you could accomplish in a single week, you know, of, of trying to make this work. It goes through small lending institutions and big lending institutions that do SBA loans. So it's not necessarily administered by the government, it's backed by the government. So if you have a personal banker or a business banker you're working with and they're an SBA approved loan operator, they will probably manage the project for you pretty simply. It's a very short application. There's very little information. You are essentially going to take, we've got two different ways we've been told to do this. We either take the last 12 months of our employee employment and to put together our payrolls, or you take the previous year, one of the two. And so it just depends on which bank we've talked to, but either way, you're going to take your 12 month window, whatever window your bank's telling you to do, you're going to divide payroll, which is all of your employees that are not 1099 contractors that at least at this point, my bank told me to turn in 1099 miscellaneous contractors. But as of this, last night, I believe there's a new rule that independent miscellaneous 1099 contractors are not to be included in your payroll calculation. So see which way your bank wants you to go, but you're going to calculate your entire payroll by 12 months, divide that by 12 times it by two and a half. And that is going to be the maximum amount of your loan that you're going to get. You're going to then have to take in order to get that, forgiven, you're going to take that money and apply it towards eight weeks of payroll. And then the half that you did the two and a half times that payroll that's designed to cover rent, mortgage interest and utilities. So in general terms, you're going to be able to get yourself to be able to run your office and your employment of all your employees for basically two months free of charge, because as long as you apply those correctly to the existing employees and the payrolls that you applied for, it's going to be forgiven. Now, we're dealing with federal government. We're dealing with a set of rules that literally has had, had minutes to be made. I think those rules are going to change. I think the, the process of getting forgiven might get a little more difficult, but in general terms, you'd be able to get that forgiven fairly simply as long as you apply it. And not only that, if you've gotten rid of employees, you're allowed to immediately rehire them and get them back on your payroll. The idea of this whole thing is to get the money into the hands of the employees so it can, so they can manage their lives. They can pay their bills. If they open up this whole world again, we can go to restaurants and movies and games and sports. You're going to have money to go do that. That's the goal. So it, it seems to me as, as far as giving out money is probably the best way that's going to work. Now, we are a weird industry. Many industries are sitting at home, nothing to do, and they're not really running their businesses. So they're going to put payroll out and not have the income. If you stay busy and you keep your people employed because you're making money with them, Scotty, this is free money. Because if, if my payrolls are already being covered by my, net, my operating businesses, there is no need for you to prove that you can't operate your business. This, fund, this funding is to make sure that you can operate your business going forward for, without knowing what's about to happen. So you do not have to be in a situation where you can't keep them employed. So if you can keep them employed and you can bring this money in, you literally will be able to run your business for two months without any payroll or overhead costs. And that is going to set you up for a great future. Amen. Amen. Um, any of those yeah. things I ran through, Mike, was any of those things, did I miss something that we need to talk about? I do want to make sure I do talk to you about commission payroll because I think you have some salespeople on commission and I'm not sure I know the nuances of that. That's a hundred percent commission. We, we looked at it and we were, we're not able to use 1099 employees. So we just did everybody that was on our payroll. And then also you have a, um, uh, I'm looking at my phone. I just see Buzz Giz is calling me this morning. So. Uh -oh. Tell him to get on and watch and talk to us. He knows something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's that guy? It's, um, <laughs> it's, but, but basically, there is also one thing you might have left off is there's a cap on how much uh, payroll you can use. $100,000 is the maximum salary per year. And I also do think the, what I read, the applications have to be in by June 20th. I think you said right. something earlier about sub, September. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but you're right. They do have to be in by June. But remember, guys, my understanding, too, this is first come, first serve. So 
We've yeah. got two hundred forty-nine billion dollars to get out there, and if, if anything tells me, if I if I have any idea of how this market's going to work, it's going to go pretty quickly. Now they've talked about adding to that, but obviously this as as this is rolling out, the system's going to get overwhelmed pretty quickly. I mean, like Obamacare did when they first tried to turn that on, it crashed the system multiple times. I would fully anticipate that there's going to be some issues getting this put together and make it happen. But ideally, if you're working with your local bankers, they're going to be able to navigate that pretty well for you because you don't have to do the navigation. You just got to get them the information. Um, and yeah, Mike, to your point, so the 1099 contractors, the way we were initially told, which I don't think this is still the case, is that if we had independent employees that were 1099 contractors, we were allowed to include them. But if we had subcontractors that we 1099, we were not. But I, I do believe that last night there was a final ruling um, interim final ruling. I'm not sure what that, why that says, those are, seems like a contradiction, but last night the, the feds put out an interim final rule. <laughs> so it's a final rule for now that said that you can't use 1099 miscellaneous employees. So make sure you guys check into that with your local banks or see what your, what your banker's telling you to do. We took the advice of our bank and did exactly what he told us and, and had him update us if we need to make an adjustment. But um, in general terms, is it, the application is two or two pages long with a quick, with a simple signature. You do have to ideally have your 940 and 941 forms, right? Because that's going to prove what your payrolls were. That makes it pretty simple if you have people on payroll. Um, as well, you're going to then, um, depending on the bank, if you don't have a relationship, you will do need to provide them, you know, articles of organization and those kind of things. If you've already got a relationship with them, some of that might be on file for them as well. So um, the application process, even though we did it three times in two days, it's, it's very simple once you kind of log in what your, what your expenses need to be and what your payroll expenses are. Um, now going forward, I think it's going to be extremely important to make sure you are tracking that correctly because obviously the, the rules are going to, I think the rules are going to be moving on us pretty quickly, but to make sure that you properly account for putting the money back in the hands of your employees through payroll, that is going to be critical. Your rents and your, and your utilities, those can't, two, couple things can't change. You can't decrease your employees and you know, you can't get, you can't have 20 employees and go to 10 and then pay your 20 more money. I don't believe that's. You have to keep the same number of employees are very similar and you can't, you know, your rents can't have went from 6,000 a month to $26,000 a month. So any money that doesn't get spent in this, in this situation back to the employees or your overheads, then will be responsible to be paid back for you on a 1% loan that I believe has a 12 month deferment. Maybe it's a six month deferment before you have to start making payments. So um, it, it, there's, there's about a, there's probably 20 different places on the internet right now. You can get more information about the program, but that's, that's the soup and nuts of it. The critical thing is get with your SBA loan banker, get them on the phone, find out what you got to do and don't wait. If you haven't done it yet, call him, find a way to get a hold of him today, figure out what you got to do and get it in their office on Monday morning. First come first serve means it's going to be gone, right? Don't let that, don't, don't be somebody that missed out on an opportunity. Even small, medium, large companies, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I don't want anybody's numbers here, but you know, a company like Mike that's doing a million or a thousand pools a year, you're talking millions of dollars potentially to help support your business through a critical downturn, right? It, it just, it'd be ludicrous not to accept that. Now, if the rules change and the forgiveness situation change, if you don't have to use that to operate, you obviously can just pay the loan back, right? So it, it looks like a pretty, pretty uh, risk adverse situation. It doesn't seem like there's a big risk in going after that type of loan. So. Um, Scotty, you, you guys, I assume have done the same thing. When did you, what is your banker telling you? Is there anything different in the process? No, we, we have, uh, you're, you're, you're spot on with everything. We have you know, all the paperwork is in, um, you know, that started on actually Wednesday, I think during the week and we kept updating it like you guys did. Um, so hopefully we'll have, you know, that, that'll be fairly quick and painless. The, um, and I always forget that we have so many acronyms going on now, but the, uh, that what's the E E I. E-D-I-L, -E which e -D -I -L. That's, that's the other disaster loan that you can get. I want to, before, let's go to that in a minute. I want to back up a little bit. Mike, you, Mike, you brought up the um, $100,000 payroll max. So that is a per employee payroll max. So if you have employees that are being compensated more than $100,000 for a year, you're only allowed to calculate up to $100,000 of their payroll, correct? That's correct. Yeah. So that's how we did our calculation. And yeah, it's a hundred thousand is a cap. Okay. But not not as far as organizational weekly. It's just that's any single employee that has an annual yep. income of over a hundred thousand dollars, we cap them at a hundred thousand um, dollars, which that's is good. you know intended not to give the rich more money. You know we can all decide who thinks what what rich is. Um, let's talk about commission salespeople, Mike. What are you doing? Do you have commission salespeople? Correct. 
All of our salespeople are commission. Okay. So how do, how do they work? Are they employees or are they 1099 contractors that have to do this on their own? They're employees. They're okay. employees. We, they're not 1099. Okay. Uh, so so we, you're, able to take, you're able to take their annual um, compensation based on, on commissions and then divide that by 12, the same process? What's the general process to do that? No, that's what we did. We did a 12-month uh, payroll. We just you know, did every individual with all the commissions uh, on each one. And that's what we went by. Of course, a lot of our designers were over the hundred thousand dollar number. So we had a lot of, we just capped them at a hundred and that's the number we used, but okay. all w, they're all regular employees. They're not 1099. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if you have a 1099 commission salespeople, I believe what will happen is you won't be able to include that on your situation, but they will be able to apply for it independently on their own and, and be able to get the same forgiveness to cover what would their typical payrolls would be for the next couple months. So, um, Fairly good program to get money into the hands of the individuals that might spend it, right? Instead of getting into the hands of the corporations that will then, you know, add it to plant property and equipment. So, uh, Rick, uh, uh, Kevin Ford had an interesting question. He says, um, has anyone else had a problem with the banks adding additional requirements over the top of what the PPP application is requiring? I, I have I have not, and I don't think they're allowed to. I think there, there is no personal guarantee requirement. And there is no um, there is no credit check or credit run on this thing. This if you are a co person in business today, the the the, the basic checkpoint is: Are you going to use this money for the lack of knowledge of what's about to come in the future? I don't have the right ver the verbiage in front of me, but if if you're concerned that you're going to have trouble keeping your employees in the future, this loan is for you. And it, other than that, I don't believe the banks can require anything specific to that, other than normal SBA requirements. If you if they don't have your organizational status, your EIN numbers, those kind of things, those absolutely have to get to the bank because it's going to be handled like an SBA loan package other than the personal guarantee and the credit check. So when we submitted our application yesterday, we did get a response from our bank um, when we turned in the, the, the application form that in one or two days, they, they may be requiring backup support to support the payroll numbers that we, that we used. That's the only, only request we got. We said. Did you not, Mike, did they not ask for your 940 and your 941 forms? No, okay. not so, application form we didn't. So I'm sure that'd be next, okay? Yeah, so if, if someone not familiar with what those are, basically every month, every quarter you run payroll, you're gonna get a 940 or nine, I think a 941 is the, end, the one that, that encompasses the entire year. That is gonna be proof of your payrolls by federal government standards. That's what you're using to pay your taxes. So um, they, those will be what, we, we provided those to our bank already. And I think our bank was just being, uh, using foresight to say, let's get me all the documents I might possibly need. So I think Randy, to that question, yes, your bank might ask for a few things that aren't sitting on that application, but I think most of that is in protection of you, right? They don't want someone to turn in an application for a $5 million loan when they could, could never support it because what's gonna happen, I don't know what's gonna, the, the rules are not very specific, but if you can't justify those those fees, you can't just go get this big, huge loan and then and then you know because that if that was the case, I'd I'd ask for a twenty million dollar loan today because I at one percent I can find a way to make money with that. So um, I think the, the the goal here is the banks are trying to protect the individual getting the loan to make sure that they don't get themselves in trouble after the fact. Um, and this loan covers payroll and some of your taxes. It doesn't cover, look at the paperwork, it only covers a portion of, of the taxes that you would put into payroll. I think it doesn't include FICA or Social Security or something. Um, I, there's, a, there's a couple things that aren't fully included in that, but that, that's, that'll be explained to you by your banker, so you make sure you put that together correctly. <clears throat> um, now, e EIDL, I think, is what it's called, the one you brought up, Scotty. So there's also disaster relief loan programs. I am not anywhere near as familiar with those, but those are items where you can get quick money quick um, so that you can, that has nothing to do with payrolls. And I think it's a separate loan package and loan program that you can use to sustain your business and at, at some better rates and better, better or speed to the money, right? In order, in order to get you to keep your doors open before you're going to get in trouble, you can use those funds. Are you very familiar with those, Scotty? We, we've, uh, we're getting more, a little more up to speed every day with it. I've heard um, that people being funded already with it. I think it's a, a $10,000 um, starting jumping off point and, and going from there, but I've heard it's pretty quick and painless. So it, it sounds like triage to me that, that if you're in that situation where you, you need it desperately, um, that, that that might be a great option. Yeah, I think I think the initial EIDL loan thing, like what you just brought up, is I think their intentions are is to get you up to ten thousand dollars within three days. So that would, like you said, triage for a business that's in a position of can't make the payroll, can't cover rents, can't do something like that. 
they absolutely can jump in with the IDL. Um, the other thing that's great about SBA loans, if you have a current SBA loan that's covering maybe a building purchase or plant property equipment purchase, there is real easy ways to get forgiveness on principal payments going forward for the next six months to 12, I believe. I think it's only six, but there's a lot of pro programs in there for anybody with existing small business loans that they can get some, some forgiveness over time to not have to make principal payments. So you, let's say you got a $10,000 a month mortgage payment on your building that's through an SBA loan you absolutely can get the next couple months of setting aside the principal payments and not have to make them on the building. The interest will still accrue and the payments for principal will be tied to the end. But again, this is all about planning, right? It, it, that's not gonna happen by a phone call to say, hey, Joe, I can't make my payment today. You need to be looking forward to say, where is my cash flow? Mike Church brought it up. Here. I've got 13 weeks of cash flow of reserves in place to make sure that I can keep operating my business. And then I'm gonna keep adapting that, that number because maybe it's gonna start getting smaller or maybe it's gonna get bigger and I can be more comfortable in it. But if you're gonna get in a position where you don't have the cash flow, don't wait till you don't have the cash flow. The, the, the easiest time to get money is when you do not need the money. If you're in a position that you need the money, it's very difficult to get the money because you don't have any assets and proceeds or income or revenue to show. So you wanna make sure you're working those programs out now. If you think at all there's a potential where you can't make your SBA loan payment, get it settled today. Get with your SBA loan manager, find a way to offset those, those payments. Six months of not making a rent payment is huge for a lot of small businesses, right? Anywhere from three to $20,000 monthly payment on an SBA loan, you can push that for six months and not have to make it. That lets you, and even if you think you're close, stack up that cash. Take the next six months of not making your loan payment, put the money in the bank so you can operate your business, cover payrolls, deal with what you have to deal with. Some of, the, some of your credit cards and everybody else are not gonna necessarily be forgiveness or give you forgiveness, they're gonna expect payments. Last thing you wanna do is get your credit scrambled because you can't make a credit card payment, right? So everybody's gotta figure that out. And I've also heard that many companies have um, gotten the same situation from a lot of their loan, um, vehicle loan operators. If you've got truck loans, there's a number of companies that finance trucks that will allow you to offset those, those payments for months at a time. You'll still carry the interest, obviously, right? And you still, those principal payments still have to be tied in at the end, but you've got to plan your cash flow. If you are tight, if, even if you were tight on cash flow before this started, and because you, you're a shitty product business manager and you weren't doing your job, this is your free get out of jail day. You, this is the day. Sit down, talk to your accountant, talk to your SBA loan manager, and find a way to get that six months of reprieve and put some cash in the bank so you can come out of this stronger than you went into it. Don't, don't lose that opportunity. It would it'd be ignorant if you, if you didn't do that when that opportunity is standing in front of you. Even if you think you're relatively competent in your business and you're doing okay, but if you've always been cash poor, if you've always had to make sure you get payments to make your next payment, you literally have the opportunity to grab six months and operate your business for free on overheads. If you don't take advantage of that, you're crazy. Yeah, absolutely, Rick. I, I, I learned a lesson about five years ago, and I think this should be a, a reminder for everybody. You need a banking relationship. If, if you're in business, period, I don't care if you do $100,000 a year, you're doing $100 million, you need a banking friendship. And you know, probably somebody in Mike's situation has multiple. Um, you know, we're, we're now courted by banks, and, and that, those relationships now are paying off for us because they were very proactive about reaching out to us, seeing what they can do, because this – really is their time to shine and, and, and solidify those relationships. And, you know, to your point earlier, I also sense that they want this process to be as streamlined as possible because you, they're, this is their Super Bowl. You know, they're, they're, they're getting their asses kicked right now. And so they want everything to be quick to the point. Um, they, they don't have time to dig deep with, with everybody. You know, they're, they're going to spread a, a very broad brush to get all this done, get the paperwork in, help as many people out as they can. And trust me, they're, they're here to help. Well, I think that personal relationship is huge. I mean, I, I, I think I learned that Wells Fargo still isn't ready to accept applications, right? So they're, all the Wells Fargo's customers are losing their mind because Wells Fargo couldn't get it together to get their application process set up. I have spoken to my personal banker probably 25 times in the last three days. And every time I call him, he picks his phone up. I guarantee you, if you don't have a relationship with your banker and you're dialing some 1-800 number to get a hold of Wells Fargo or Bank of America, and don't have a relationship to call, you're obviously gonna be way slower in getting this done. You know, it's very difficult. You got, now is exactly the time, even if you don't have a small business banker relationship, create one today. Ron, it looks like you've got some information you wanna give us. Yeah, I mentioned earlier before the call started that I was speaking to a customer yesterday that 
have, he actually received funding yesterday, and I don't know the particular program that he applied for. Um, he does bank with Bank of America, and he did receive just under three hundred thousand dollars. So I'm not sure what program that is, but but it's happening out there, and I'm not nearly as connected to it as you guys are. But I, I did. I, I'm starting to hear more and more about it. Yeah, from, I'm, from, from I'm sure that's the EIDL program, and that's a perfect example. Smart companies are doing smart business. He's now bolstered his business with three hundred thousand dollars. It's already in his account. There's people that are still standing there today going like, how am I going to get through this? We are in such a unique opportunity. The government is trying to help you help your business. Look at every option you have to help your business and take control of it. If you're short on cash flow, find out what options are to help bolster your cash flow. If you're going to, if you're, if you've got payroll and you got employees, go get this money. The worst case scenario is you don't qualify properly and you don't get it. The best case scenario is you qualify properly. You've actually kept your business running full time. You, we're able to apply all of that to your employee base and you sock that money away as cash flow and you're going to operate your business much stronger going forward and be able to help support the entire community around you, the employees that work for you and the subcontractors that work for them and, and everybody else. It is, it is a great opportunity this time of year to be able to, this, this situation, even though it's as bad as it could be and most of the places are shut down. This is the time the construction industry got a gift. We were able to keep working in most markets we're able to keep ourselves work and people would have nothing better to do other than pay attention to what we're doing, right? Because they got nothing else to do. And the government's going to help us fund through some of that process. We have to take advantage. JC uh, commented in the comments that uh, he uh, believes Citibank is also not ready along with Wells Fargo. So it appears that the big boys are, um, you know, having some issues. Yeah. If that's your only bank option that, that, you know, you need to work with that, but Look at the smaller banks. A lot of you can probably go on the SBO, SBA website and find local SBA approved lenders. There's premium lenders that do this all the time, and that's what they're focused on. And they obviously have a lot less customers, and they don't have like my bank is 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 set up. My small bank is actually allowed to do the underwriting in house before it goes off to the feds. The feds just give them an approval number. They do all of the underwriting. Some of these bigger banks do that too, but the layers to the underwriting is 17 layers. It's got to get to this guy, to this guy, to this guy. So. You know, I, 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 we've got to be really careful what's going on on who's on who's doing it. But make sure you pay attention to your opportunities. Don't if you can't get the information you need out of your current bank, you know, make sure you find one that you can and, and, and be careful, too. I think, uh, you know, we, we don't know specifically which banks are ready and which ones aren't. I just know the, the point being is if you can't find your bank being ready or you can't get a response, there is smaller banks out there. Start reaching out. They they are going to make money by funding these loans. So it's to their benefit to fund these loans. And they're also going to make money by building relationships with you. So if you start reaching out to them now, you'll actually start creating a relationship and they're going to help you run your business. So do it now and do it quick, but get with your own bank um, guy, get with your S get, get with your CPA to make sure that you're putting the paperwork together correctly and what you need to run your business. we got somebody that just came on that's got their uh, microphone on. If he could turn that down. Yeah, it's else I, I muted it. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, Scotty, is, Scotty, is there anything else you think uh, specific little nuances that, that businesses can be doing right now to help themselves keep moving forward? Yeah, man, just keep your chin up. You know, let's let's uh, get through this. Like I said, I I've looked at this from we had a big staff meeting. Um, you know, I'm going to say about it's all led together. March had 80 days in it, but around the middle of March and. Um, we're, our foot is on the gas, you know, we, we want our, we want to, number one, our employees to feel secure that nobody's going anywhere and that their jobs are safe, that we are going to get through this. Um, I'm the captain of my ship. You're the captain of your ship as is Mike. They're looking to us for leadership and, and trust me that happens. That meeting now is happening every day. So I almost feel that our team is, is bonding together, um, like, like no other time. And, and they're, they're looking for support. Um, you know, it's from a marketing standpoint, like I said, to just to recap, we have undivided attention of clients right now. I find myself answering my phone, which I never do. I'll be honest. My phone's on silent all the time. I'm picking up my phone and, uh, we, we need to take advantage of that as, as, um, as business owners. And to your point earlier, listen, not everybody's going to survive this. Um, the, the cream always rises. Uh, I, I've been through the Lehman brothers crash been through some bad times and you and I joked about this in Mesa, Arizona. It made you a smarter businessman. I know it did. So there's going to be lessons to be learned out of this. And I think the, the biggest lesson is 
if somebody's giving you something for free, take it. <laughs> don't, don't argue with them. Fill out the paperwork. Get up tomorrow morning. I know it's Sunday. Everybody has shit to do on Sunday, or they used to. But do the paperwork. Get it in there. Accept that gift. If you can't use it, give it back if it makes you feel better. But that could be the difference of being here in November or not being here. The, the other thing that you brought up a little bit is, is, is communicating to your employees. You know what I mean? The, the, there, there's a lot of uncertainty in what's going on and not, and a lot of your employees are out there in the trenches still today and don't have the time to get to figure out what's going on. And like our typical media storm, there's all kinds of misinformation thrown around to these guys. Um, I think it's critical to keep up with your employees, let them know that you're doing these things. Look guys, I'm setting ourselves up for the future. I'm making sure we're going to have jobs going forward. I'm making sure our cash flow is there. You know, the, the, the best, most and strongest companies in the world make sure they do the most important thing. We always talk about how important the client is. Um, and, I, and I think that's important. But I think Richard Branson has said this many a time. If you take care of your, your employees first, they will take care of your clients. If you're sending employees into the field that, don't, that are distracted by what's going on around them, that are uncertain of their future, that aren't happy, that aren't comfortable, It'll, it'll end up in your customer's mind. They're going to, some of them will sit there and chat with customers and, oh my God, it's crap. And my, my, you know, my guys behind closed doors, we don't know what's going, like keep them fully informed. If you're doing the right things and helping your business get along and putting the cash where it needs to be and making sure they have a paycheck, most people aren't sure if they're going to have a paycheck going forward for the next eight weeks. Is that, that's a pretty, pretty, pretty basic situation, right? Majority of the United States currently doesn't know if they'll have a paycheck for the next eight weeks. Right now we can confirm that our employees, we can't confirm, but we've applied for it. But once, once we've gotten through that, we'll be able to confirm for our employees that not only are they going to be employed, we've got eight weeks for sure in front of them. And it might get extended. It might not. But even if, if we can get funding for eight weeks, I can easily get them well past eight weeks because I've got some cash flow to work with. We've got business in the door. So it's, it's an extremely unique opportunity for us to make this work. And if you're not, if you're not capitalizing on all those things, if you're not making sure you keep your, your, your employees well-informed so they're happy, and they know what's going on and then keep your customers, keep your customers in reach. You got to keep touch, touch everybody, keep touching everybody. Let them know that you're on top of this and work together. I know Mike, you've been, we talked about this a little bit. Mike's had in, in Austin, they tried to shut down building permits. What did Mike do? Started getting together with other pool builders started to get, and started putting some pressure on them to try to keep permits open, try to keep things moving. Look, if we can do online permit applications, what'll slow down the sales funnel too is, thousands and thousands of jobs that can't get through the permitting process because they close the offices down. Uh, if, if you're in a situation where you've got somewhere that's going to say, we're going to quit accepting permits and providing permits, get together with your local pool builders, get together with your, your politicians and put some pressure on them. Because one thing I think we can't stop doing is letting permits get into at least the approval process. I could justify maybe not letting us have new starts, but if they don't let us even submit permits, then we're going to have 30, 60 days of nothing. When, when this is all over, because we'll have all these permits we couldn't submit for. So be thinking through that, be proactive. What is it going to do to your business if that happens? And don't be afraid to reach out. You got we're, we're, power is in the numbers, right? If, we, if you get a guy like Mike Church that builds a thousand pools and you pick them at, you know, like in my market, I got multiple pill builders that have 600 pools, 900 pools. I'm, I'm a tiny little fish in the sea, but I, but I guarantee you, if I reach out to, the, to Tim Murphy and Mike Smith over here and we start, we have, a, we have a major rally together and we start putting some pressure on, we can control our environment a little bit. That, that's how this works. So don't be afraid to use your, your, your foes as allies. This is the time to work together and even help them work together. Look, the strong ones need to get out of this. We need to keep everybody employed. Yeah, Rick, that, that's a great point. I mean, this goes back to our, our education background you know, with, with various different people. I mean, we're all in this together. There, there are no competitions. High tide raises all the ships. And, you know, we, we do have those situations, as you spoke about, where townships are shut down, um, things like that. And the only way to get through it is, is collectively because, you know what, if my competitor goes out of business, it honestly, it doesn't help me. If you, right. if you go to any, any, any great mall in this, in this world, you know, in our case, King of Prussia, you know, outside Philadelphia, there's five of the best steakhouses in the world, all within a couple hundred yards of each other. That's not by accident. The cluster, the cluster effect works. Works for more. Well, works for sales. Well, realize too, if you got a if one of your competitors starts getting into a position where he needs to buy the work, then he's not helping your situation at all. He'll be out there shopping jobs cheaper than anybody because he needs work coming through the door. The last thing you want to do is have him in an unhealthy condition, struggling to survive. Because in his struggle to survive, he will make your life even worse because he's going to take work that he normally would have bid at a proper rate to buy to buy it so we can have it. So. 
there, there's, there's, I've yet to run into a situation where me helping out a local pool builder or a b local businessman ever turned backwards on me. I, I just don't see how that works. I've got, I've got people in my market all the time. I see, I see a couple on the screen right with us right now, just listening, you know, there, there's no benefit to breaking them down, help them be successful because together the, everybody rises. The race to the bottom is not the solution. Amen. Hey, Rick, what you said earlier, and I think Scotty said the same thing as about communicating with your employees. I think that's very important. Uh, I, made, I made it a point every day to blast off one or two emails of something being positive because everybody is down with the market because we all, we all went through this in 2008 a little bit with the financial crisis. But I think that's been very important. And I've had feedback from my employees just thanking me that just I'm trying to put whatever I can find positive throughout the day of something changing, even it was for us when we were stopped in certain cities from building pools, but even though we got it, we were able to proceed and getting the permits issued, I just, I sent out little things like that or send out some numbers of leads coming in and all that just to keep everybody from being, uh, thinking that this is, uh, you know, just knowing that it's not going to last forever. You know, yeah, I, the other thing I want to point out too, we've got a number of people on the call because we're kind of doing this live and we're on Zoom as well. If you're on Zoom and you're watching and, you, and you've and you got yourself on the screen, if you want to ask some questions or have something to add to the conversation, you're welcome to. Um, if you unmute yourself, we can kind of see that happening. We'll have a better, we'll be able to tell that you have something to talk about. So absolutely, if you want to uh, jump in and say something, please unmute yourself and we can have a talk. So Jake, you just unmuted yourself. Is there something you want to add to the conversation? Oh, maybe not Jeff. I see you did the same. Jeff, is there something you wanted to add? Maybe, maybe not. Um, either way, so I, the I, that's a great idea, Mike. The, you know, just a simple email once a week, it's letting everybody know what's going right, what's not going right. I mean, those are those are simple things you can do. You've got it. The, the most people are going home and listening to the news, and everything's bad, right? There's if I if I try to cut through the news and try to figure out. Um, you know, the situation when I listen to the news, because most of the time they want to get excitement and, and freak people out. So that's what the news comes around and you start cutting through the information and cutting through the numbers, right? So it's, it's being super helpful to, to help your employees stay up to beat and know what's going on. Hey, Robert, did you got something you want to talk about? I got a whole bunch of people on mute, but nobody talking. So make sure you've, uh, if you've got a microphone that works, you're welcome to- Hi, right, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so one of the things that I might like to uh, also touch base is that it's so critical to also have communication with your suppliers and also make sure you have that chain of things ready. Uh, if you're missing parts or you're missing things, you know, re reach out and also, you know, as part of the industry, finding a way to get all your, all your chains of supplies and materials. Because a lot of these material homes are just shut down. I, I want to buy sand and I can't get it. It took me two weeks to get a slurry port. Yeah, I think, JC, you're right. I know we've got many suppliers, too, that we used to be able to just walk in the doors. And because we're essential, it was just staying normal. But most of my market now, we have to call ahead, order ahead, and, and, and pull up and they'll load our vehicles. Even on stuff like pavers and stuff, we're kind of in the same scenario. So um, you're going to have to keep those <laughs> communications yeah, open so we can make sure it works. Pension business license. Robert, you got something for us? No, my phone uh, unmuted itself. I apologize. <laughs> not a problem. Not a problem. Um, the, the other thing, since since I've got Ron Newman floating in the background, Ron Newman, can you unmute yourself? I, you've uh, there's kind of a industry announcement will pop out there. Most people probably have heard, but uh, Pentair has acquired A and A Manufacturing, the Infor Infor company. So. Ron, give us a little spiel on uh, obviously what the plan there is in general terms. I'm sure we can't get too much info out of you, but what do you got for us? Um, not a whole lot. I know that Pentair acquired a and Manufacturing, and um, um, they're going to, it sounds like they're going to run kind of the way they've been running standalone here for a little while while we work through the, uh, the honeymoon process and uh, more information to come. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we've, so we're, we've been working with Paramount for years. They obviously got acquired by uh, Hayward. At this point, just like with what Pentair is probably going to do, um, we haven't seen any change overall in the, in the majority of what's happening. Obviously, they're both really good, strong companies, both Pentair and ANA. Um, if they're smart, and I think they both are, they'll look at each other's and, and benefit, see what the benefits and what the, what the losses can be as working together. One might have a better culture. One might have a better, um, you know, product supply chain, any of those things. So I it's usually not a huge downfall when people, when companies get together, especially smart. <laughs> smart companies. Most of the time they come together and give us some real good. <laughs> Stop. 
Uh, Ron, I, I, uh, I'm going to mute Lance out there. Um, Ron, I, I saw also where you guys were actually uh, had uh, started making some ventilators that you guys turned a corner. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Um, so it looks like, and once again, a lot of this information I'm getting, as you guys are seeing it as well, but um, unbeknownst to me, we, we've been making some uh, filters for ventilators for years and years. I mean, we're, we're, we're in the filter business, and, um, and it looks like we've taken some lines and ramped up production to... Uh, to increase the amount of ventilators that the ventilator manufacturers can can build and get to the market as they're needed. That's awesome. Good on to see these companies coming something. together. So I want to say something. Uh, we actually did sign two new contracts last week, and so the customers are out there and people are wanting to put the money into their their backyards. Um, and also in Los Angeles, um, there is a way to get permits. They have a drop-off system. We got a GPI a grading pre-inspection last week, and we submitted two new jobs in a drop-off system to the city of LA. And it seems like they're even approving the projects quicker now because less people are out there submitting plans and applying for permits. So there's work out there and the, it, the process is even in Los Angeles at least working a little bit faster. That's awesome. I mean, part to what you brought up too, um, Carrie, is that if, if anybody's going to figure it out and they're going to figure it out now, the backyard paradise is, is, is something to have, right? It's starting to warm up. You're stuck in your home. You've got everybody home. You know, if you want to keep yourself out of uh, child abuse and divorce, it'd be nice if you had a big backyard that you could play in and have a pool in an outdoor environment. So I think you gotta be careful how you parlay that into advertising and marketing, but it absolutely this is the, they are focused on the fact that they're crushed in a, in a house at this point. If they don't have a pool in their backyard or anything beautiful in their backyard yet, you can definitely sell that as a good sales tool. And I think you're right, Carrie. We've, we, if we can, if we're the, we're the very few businesses that are continu continuing to be able to operate at a high level because we're considered essential in most places, maximize that opportunity. You, you have your clients with nothing better to do, be marketing, be reaching out, be touching the clients and be pointing out the fact that we can still get permits, we can still do construction, we can still be working on your project, we have time in our office staff to be working on the design side, start showing them what those beautiful backyards can look like, you'll be surprised, you can, we'll get through this, but you got to be working hard and planning, you can't be sitting on your hands and saying, well, I heard they closed LA County, I'm done, I guess we're not going to get any permits. Do some investigation, you might be able to find a way through the system, you can be like Mike Church, you can find a way to work together, put some pressure on them, I know Austin shut down permits, and then Mike and Mike and his crew got them to open that back up. Those are, that's a huge, that's his, that's his biggest market he has. The last thing he wants to do is have two or three or four weeks that that funnel is shut down. So don't be afraid to, to try to change the, the opinions of those around you. From, um, We've also, um, all of our clients that we built pools for say 10 years ago, we're contacting all of them saying, Hey, it's time to upgrade that equipment. It's time to replaster the pool, uh, upgrade the tile, whatever it is. And so we're, reaching out to our entire client base from the last 10, 15 years, trying to get them to do some upgrades now. And, and that's a big market as, as well. We, we didn't use, used to do so many remodels, but uh, we're finding people are wanting to buy new equipment, pumps, heaters, and also uh, do some remodels of, of pools that we built, you know, say 10 years ago. That's awesome. I think I would think it'd be a good time to be selling pool heaters right now. Everybody's just about warm Absolutely. enough to go swimming. But don't have a warm enough body of water. I'm sure Ron would love for us to do a fire sale on a bunch of or be, be uh, murdering his sales force with new heater sales. So um, get your Rick, guys out Rick, here. Rick, real quick, you know, yeah. um, as we've gone through this before uh, in the Laguna fires or the Malibu fires, bureaucracy will start to ease up a little bit because a lot of these building departments are run by, you know, politicians and the city. And what we saw after the the fires in Laguna, it would take us a year to get a permit. And as soon as those fires kind of cleaned it up or whatever, whatever the emergency is, whatever the pandemic is, that we're, we probably will have a lower level of that initially to kind of kick it up. So this is, this is a good time to get projects through. It's a nice explanation for clients. Hey, if you're going to get it through, this is, this is a time you want to get through uh, the city of Laguna Beach or the city of Malibu because they're, they're going to ease up a little bit politically to, to keep things moving. So yeah. yeah. And those cities, they want to keep their people working as well. So if they have more plans to review and permits to issue, those people are now working as well. Hey, Mike Moore, you're on the call. Are you able to unmute? I'm curious. I know you had some of your areas you weren't able to get any permitting going or any new construction. Is that still the case? I don't know if you're out there listening right now. I see you're popping up. Turn your you're you're muted currently. 
Yeah. And we might not be able to hear you. It sounds like you might have a. Uh, am I unmuted now. Yeah, yeah you're I'm unmuted, muted. Michael. But I think you got low bandwidth. Are you on your cell phone? Hey. I'm on my cell. Sorry. Hey, Mike. Do do me a favor. Just text it back to us. We go in the chat section and chat it in. I'm just curious how things are going in your markets. I know last week last week last week when we spoke, there was a couple of your markets you weren't able to work in, but you should be able to text in there real well in the uh, chat area. So. Well, Mr. Chafee, great job today. Um, uh, just for everybody who knows, we, we had a lot of people watching over on Facebook, but Facebook was glitching. I, I loaded it multiple times. It would go live and then it would crash. I think we're consuming enormous amounts of bandwidth in the U.S. So, um, but I have recorded it here on this unit and uh, I will get it up and out on all of the Ask the Masters channels as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Ron, did you have something else you want to add to what's going on? No, no, I, I, I mean, you know, th thanks for this platform, you guys. This is, I mean, this is amazing for the industry and, and we need people like you guys to keep pushing the envelope during these tough times. And we're here for you guys. Reach out to your local reps, anything we could do to help or, or get through these challenging times, we're here for you guys. Yeah, I mean, get everybody realize we'll put this up on YouTube, we'll put it up on Facebook, but um, going forward, there's a lot of things happening, a lot of things changing. So everybody that's out there that's got questions, don't be afraid to, to interact with us either on the Yas Masters podcast page on Facebook or even on some of the YouTube videos we have out there. Um, we want to make sure you also, if you want to keep up to date, like and subscribe. I mean, go to our YouTube page today, right this minute, get on there, like it, subscribe to it, and then link on that bell. If you get that, once you link that bell, every time we put something new out, it's going to send you a text or an, or an update. So um, we're trying to keep the information super timely. We're trying to get as much information and we're trying to reach out to as many different people in the industry to try to give a broad spectrum of what's going on. So if you've got, if you're on this call and you'd like to be part of the, the next update, let us know. We'd be happy to have you on. I see there's a bunch of people out there that are on right now that are big players in the industry. And even if you're a small player in the industry, we, we want to hear from you. We want to understand what, what your struggles are so we can work together as a team to get over those struggles. So um, we appreciate everybody being on the show. Um, we're going to do this format if we can. Again, I think we really like it this way. If we can get Facebook or YouTube live to be a little bit more consistent, um, we'll, we'll definitely do it that way. But obviously, Zoom's working pretty well for us as well. So um, again, Go to our Facebook page if you want updates. You can you can like and subscribe there, but also our YouTube. We're really starting to pump our YouTube channel up, trying to make sure we get as much information out there. We've also got the the service side of that now too um, that we're doing with Pool Pro Podcast, which we're talking about service updates and we're bringing in we're actually bringing in industry leaders from PHTA. We're bringing in industry leaders from CPSA. We're doing everything we can to get as much information out quickly because the the the, turn, the things keep changing so fast that we can't turn out information weeks at a time. It needs to be almost every day. And so if you look at our pages, you'll see we're doing a lot of daily updates or every other updates with some with information. So anybody that's got questions they're not getting answered or wants one of us to interact with more, more directly, you can get to us on both those avenues. Fantastic. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hashtag staycation. Uh, let's all stay strong. Keep building. And uh, we're going to come out the other side of this stronger. So Awesome, guys. Thanks. Take care.